So welcome. Uh, today we will take a quick look at Ubuntu and the way to install it more minimally. Now, why would you want to do this? It's very simple. By default, Ubuntu comes with a lot of things and you might not need all of those things. So, and it's going to be really hard to get rid of all of them. So you might want to install less things to begin with and that's what they're here to do. So, as you can see here, I'm booted into the server installer. So indeed, you want to get the Ubuntu server version. And that's what you would be using to install, because that doesn't come with all of the desktop stuff. Now, you want to begin by second language. We'll go with English UK as usual, then keyboard layout. Yeah, that ain't it. We want to select the correct one, which should be the finished one. Then we can go done. Pine config. You want to make sure our uh, network is correct, and it seems to be finding it's the HTTP and the one not which is what you want to do. So we can just go down again and move on. Uh, proxy, I don't need one. If you do, you can put it in here. And if you use an alternative mirror, then we can uh, enter it here. This one seems to be once again uh, picking based on my location, so it seems to be good. Uh, then we can use a custom layout or we can use an entire disk. Uh, so now we can set this entire disk and then group or we can you know, do a custom one. So if you do a custom one, let's see why it gives us an option. So we can select this one. Then we can, let's say, we want to add the GPT partition. Now, if you were, if you were doing UEFI, we could do UEFI, but uh, we are doing uh, legacy because we're doing some VM. So we'll just do an exe4 partition as a root partition, leave it at that. So we'll just make it that uh, then create. So that's our partition. Then I to already have our uh, these partitions done. So it's our drop partition and uh, this partition we have made. So it's kind of automatically guiding us through it as well. And that's that. And selecting continue, we'll begin the installation. Sure, let's continue. Your name, okay, let's call ourselves Ubuntu. That's obvious our name. Ubuntu is also our name here. Uh, Ubuntu is also our username. Our password definitely isn't Ubuntu. Now do you want to install OpenSH? If you want to, you can. I'm not going to install it because I don't use SSH. Uh, done. Now let's see. Now if you want some of this stuff, you can install it. I don't want any of it. I want to do it the most minimally I can. So I'm going to not do any of these things. Now it's going to install things and we are going to get to see. Just... Uh, why it installs, though I know quite well why it's going to install, but you know. And it's already actually done our uh, partition configurations in the background while we're doing the other things. So now it's installing things, and now we can see the full log as well, if that's what you want to do. Another thing to mention is that there is a minimal ISO as well, uh, but that is for an old version of Ubuntu, 18.04 I believe. I know you could update later, and also oh, that only works for legacy support, so uh, keep that in mind. It won't work for your uh, UEFI and it will be an older version. So now it's actually finished updating and installing things, so now we can just go into rebooting and we should be able to get right into a functional uh, boot system. Though it doesn't have any extra stuff, it will only be a command line. Okay, it seems we need to swap up our uh, CD drive, so let's remove that. And as you can see here, it's booting. It's taking a bit of time to do so, but it is doing it. Of course, it's the first time we're booting into it, and we're doing some VM, so it's going to take a while. And now, as you can see here, we're actually booting here. So let's do... Let's log into it with the account we stopped earlier. And... Uh, now it's starting things still, okay, fair enough, but now we are, uh, okay, it's doing things. It is still currently doing its boot process, which is interesting given it gave us the login option already, 
but sure, I will let it finish its thing and uh, let me clear this actually. Okay, now it seems to work. Okay, so it's it's need some t stuff late. So now we can do. We want to begin by uninstalling Snap because that's unnecessary for most people in most cases. So we'll just get rid of that. So first, we want to do Snap list, and that you can see we have. Only three packages from Snap, which is good. We don't want to have too many of those. Because if you have many of those, then that's going to... Well, that's going to, you know, make things worse. So, what we want to do... Is we want to do sudo snap remove. We also want to do purge, so we get rid of, you know, them properly. And then we just want to kind of start removing these packages here. So I want to do that one. Okay, so I want to make sure we actually get them done so they're done. So Alex Lee is first. And then once you do that, we should be able to get rid of the other things. And once you actually uninstall all of the... Because we need to begin by uninstalling the actual snap packages and then we get rid of snap itself. So... Yeah, now we have a good rid of the Alex D, so now if we do snap list again, you can see it's already enabled. So now I want to do the Coratine, for example, and now we should be able to get rid of that, and now we did. So now once again, if you do snap list, you can see that's gone as well, and now we just want to do snap D, and that should get our snap D as well, which I believe is the snap store or whatever. And no snaps are installed. So now what we can do is we can... Uh, begin uninstalling snap itself so first thing first we want to get rid of our cache so what we want to do is sudo rm rf now be careful with rm rf this will delete anything you put in make sure you don't delete any import system files but we are doing make sure you're only doing the cache make sure you're not doing anything important uh, that's not good and then we also want to do snapd because we don't need the snapd cache anymore because well we don't have cache but make sure you're not doing anything dangerous with that to make sure you're only removing uh things like the cache you don't want to remove uh, your system files and lose everything then continuing from this we can really start uh getting rid of snap so we just want to sudo apt remove then we can just do snap uh, the actually gnome so we don't have gnome software if you were using regular uh, normal thing you would use that and yeah you don't have anything like that so you want to uh, remove snapd but yeah once it's done we want to uh, do auto remove as well so we want to do sudo up the auto remove this will remove any dependencies and such or any anything that depends on snap or you know unnecessary things let's just say that uh so now we should pretty much be uh, done with that. And then we also want to make sure we disable, actually get rid of our users uh, snap directory. So we just want to do uh, snap, if it exists. In our case, uh, it doesn't exist, I don't think, uh, but you can do that uh, in any case. Just in case it doesn't, if it does exist then you want to get rid of it. Then also what you want to do is sudo apt. Um, we want to do mark. We want to do hold. And then we want to do snap d. Why do you want to do this? It's because if you don't do this, if you have your snap d just, you know, normally. It might reinstall itself with an update. And you don't want to do that. You want to make sure it stays removed. So by putting it on hold, you are preventing any updates. In other words, preventing any future installations. From now on, we can just uh, do some other things. And there's one thing we want to do, which is uh, clearing our cache. There's a few commands we want to do for that cause. So we already don't remove, which is what we want to do. But we also want to do sudo apt clean all. Just in case for the cast or something, and then we also want to do sudo apt auto clean all. These just to get rid of any package cache and such. I don't think we have much of anything, but you can burn that and get get rid of anything that might be there. 
And now what we can do is very simple and let's set up our base system. So let's begin by, of course, installing. Also, I want to do no install recommends. We can set this a uh, uh, default for, uh, for apps as well, but I'm not going to buffer. Uh, for you can do it later, but for now, I'm just going to do this manually and we want to do neo fetch. And that we simply install neo fetch first because, of course, you have to get neo fetch every time you install anything. Then we cover neo fetch and we have neo fetch running. 